Hey everybody, it's Tom with Path of Billions, helping you find a path towards financial freedom and a better life. If you want to join me on that path, please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Inventory Performance Index, or IPI, on Amazon FBA. We're going to be going into what that even is. I'm going to be showing you my own metrics and going over what each one of them means. I'm also going to go over what you can do to improve each one of them. And near the end, I'm going to give you my number one tip for improving your IPI over the long term. So what is the Inventory Performance Index, or IPI, and why does it matter to you guys? Well, the IPI is how Amazon scores your inventory performance. They are judging things like excess inventory, stranded inventory, your sell-through rate, and other metrics. It has a range of 0 to 1,000, and if you have a score under 350, Amazon actually places limits on the amount of storage you utilize at their facility. If you have a score above 450, you are considered performing well. And if you have a score above 550, you are considered a top performer. So the reason that matters is because I just said, if you have a score under 350, Amazon places a limit on the amount of storage you have. So technically for a new seller, you do have a limit on how much inventory you could send into Amazon and you have to earn the right to use more. So this video will be really helpful for any new sellers who currently have limited storage. For me personally, when I was getting more serious about Amazon, it was right at Q4 of last year, and I was trying to send as much product as possible, considering it's the holiday sales. And unfortunately, I couldn't do that because I still have limited storage. I didn't get my unlimited storage until January 1st of this year. Also, IPI is actually really beneficial to you as a seller because it'll give you a ton of information on which products you're currently selling, how quickly they're selling, which ones you should send in more, recommendations of how much more you should send in. So we'll dive into all that in this video. All right, so we're gonna go into my computer and dive right into this information. So first to get to your IPI, you need to hover over inventory and click on inventory planning. And it'll bring, on, bring up the inventory dashboard. Now from here, this is a pretty good snapshot of everything we're going to be diving into today. You got your overview of your inventory performance index, and you can see my score is 565. You got SKU series stock today, my in stock rate, excess units, days in inventory. You got your manage excess inventory. You got notifications for anything that needs to be taken care of. You got inventory age, and you got restock inventory. And you can actually hover over some of these, and they'll give you more information. And there's also learn more and take the tour in case you want to dive into this on your own after you watch this video. So for this video, I'm going to be clicking on inventory performance index, or you could click on performance up here and it'll take you over to this page here. And then on this page, we're going to be diving into a lot of information. So on this page is again, another screenshot, but goes into even more information. So I'll start over here. It shows my IPI score again, it shows it went up four points in the last seven days. Now keep in mind that your score is reassessed every week. So it's not gonna go up and down day to day, but instead it's going to go up every week. For me, my score goes up and down on Mondays. Not sure if it's the same for everyone. And also keep in mind your IPI is based on three months of data. So this is something you're gonna have to focus on over the long term and not just a couple of days or a couple of weeks. You're, this is something you wanna focus on continually for your business. So then next we have the top influencing factors, which are what I was saying originally with excess inventory, the sell-through rate, your stranded inventory, your in-stock inventory. And you can see these four are down here also, which we're gonna dive into in a little bit. And then you got a little snapshot that says, in July, I paid $50.79 in storage fees. So the reason Amazon gives you all this information is because they want to avoid you having a bunch of useless stock in their facilities. And ultimately it does benefit you because you're not paying these storage fees, the $50 I paid. And you also have a quicker turnover, so your cash flow is better. So all of which helps you as a business owner. So then more stuff we could dive into is you have this little show details here and you can actually see your historical performance index. And again, this is based off of three months. So you can see my 
historical performance index over the past three months is starting at 506 and I've increased it nearly 60 points now and you can see they have your lowest IPI and your highest IPI and then we'll scroll down here and then we'll go to look at excess inventory first so we'll click show more details and you can see your seller comparison so if you're in the poor category it's greater than 30 percent fair is 10 to 30 percent good zero to ten percent and excellent is zero percent and again you can see mine started around 12 to 14 percent and i've been doing a lot better recently so i kept it under 10 now i'm around five to six and you can see over here your current overview so i currently have 39 excess units and that has cost me an estimated 369 dollars and this is the reason you want to look at this one specifically because you want to avoid extra costs every dollar you can save as a business owner is a dollar earned so it's really important for you and you can actually click on this reduce excess inventory here and we'll go to another page over on this page you got even more information you have how many units you have available you actually have the amount of space it's taking up within the facility you have your days of supply you have estimated excess you have estimated storage costs units sold over the last 90 days your current pricing the lowest pricing on there and then a couple options to create sales or update the product and what you want to do on this page to reduce your excess inventory is figure out how to get those excess units to sell whether it's creating a sale lowering the price improving the product page or maybe the, realizing the product is not going to sell and just removing it from your inventory altogether so for this one for instance I have 36 units available, it's 365 days of supply. My excess is 13. This is how much I'm paying in storage costs. And you can actually hover all this and you can see for next month, I'm gonna be paying $2.70. In a year, I'll be paying 64.37, so on for the next three years. You also see with the units sold, I sold one 30 days, three in 60 days, and three in 90 days. So for this one, this is a grocery product, so it has an expiration date. And two, what happened with this one was actually, uh, I had sold it previously, bought some more, and then the manufacturer actually came onto this listing. So realistically, they have over 200 units in stock. There's no real way I'm going to be able to compete with them. So in the long run, I'm probably gonna have having taking a small loss in this one. So I have lowered the price down to 1475 hoping it's pretty close so I might win the buy box so you just got to go through each one of these and figure out what the best course of action for you is so we'll go over to our next metric and dive into that one go up and click performance brings you back to this page scroll down our next one is FBA sell-through you could just like the last one you can click show more details shows your seller comparison so poor is less than one fair is one to two good is two to seven excellent is greater than seven you see a historic rate so you can see mine has gone from 2.78 up to the 4.5 it is now you can also see how many units you sold over the past 90 days which is 3191 and just like the last one we can click improve sell through and go to the next page to dive into that information So you'll see once this is loaded up, you have a bunch of information. You have how many you have available. Then you have your inventory age, which shows you how many units are how old. So you have zero to 90 days, 91 to 180, 181 says 270, 271 to 365, and then greater than 365. You can see your estimated long-term storage fees, units sold in the last 90 days, your sell-through rate, your price, and the lowest price. So sell-through rate is actually how many units of a product you have divided by the number of units sold over the last 90 days. What I do personally is I sort by the oldest products. So you come here and click on this and I'll sort it by the oldest ones. You can see how many you have for that date range. So for this product, this is actually one of the products that showed up on my excess inventory. And you can see I have six of them that are at 181 to 270 days that's how many days it's been in inventory so just like the last one you got to go through look through this information 
kind of determine what you want to do with that product, whether it's worth holding on to and hoping you get the sale, whether you want to lower the price, whether you want to just remove it from your inventory. You could also see you have a low traffic warning on some of these and low traffic just basically means it has a high sales rank. So it's not getting a lot of views on it, which means it's not getting a lot of sales. Looking at this one down here, you can see I have two that are 180 to 270 days. And so this one I actually ended up deciding just to remove completely. It doesn't look like it gets many sales, if any at all. It was actually a product I bought when I first started doing this. So it was a bad buy. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Whether I'm gonna sell it on eBay or some other platform, I'm not quite sure yet. So let's scroll up, go back to the first page and look at another metric. So next up we have stranded inventory percentage. And again, you click show more details, shows you your comparison with poor, fair, good, and excellent, gives you historic over the last couple months and shows you your current stranded inventory. Now it says zero, but this one says three. Not quite sure why that is. And Amazon is so nice as to tell me to keep up the good work. And then you click fix listings, just like the last couple to dive into more information. Now, real quick, the reason you want to keep an eye on stranded inventory is because if a product is stranded, it is not showing up as active on Amazon's website. So if a customer goes to buy a certain product and you have that available, it will not show up as available because it is stranded. So it doesn't make sense if you have money invested into a product to just let it sit and stranded. You want to get it back on the market as quickly as possible so you get that money flowing. And in this page, you can actually see the reasons why. You can see how many products you have available. You could also see what the error is. So just to go over these three errors that I have available for you, it is inventory error and you can actually hover over it and it tells you the inventory may be bound in a fulfillment center for review or you may need to refresh your listing, contact seller for, for further instructions. And what they mean by refresh your listing, you go over here, click the drop down, and you can either create a removal order or refresh strand of reason. And when you click refresh strand of reason, it says update successful, it may take up to 15 minutes for the change to take effect. I tried this on this one, it didn't work. So unfortunately I am going to have to call seller support. Then missing SKU, another strand of reason, so what happens with this is you have a product listed, let's say, you sell out of it, so you delete the listing because you are no longer selling the product. But then for some reason, say Amazon lost one or a customer returns it and it's still sellable, your product will go back into your inventory, but because you don't have an active listing, it can't, it will get considered stranded. So you'll have to go on this, click relist. And then the one thing you wanna make sure is on the relist, relist page, when you're putting in your price, and all that, you want to come over here and put in your seller SKU in the SKU section. And essentially what that does is if you don't put the SKU in, it'll just create a new listing without this one product you have available. It needs to be under your seller SKU. And then another one is restricted a ASIN. So for this one, sometimes when you buy a product, it won't be restricted when you buy it and you send it in. Maybe it doesn't sell right away. Maybe they suddenly restrict it, whatever the case is. You can no longer sell a product. This one, the only thing you really can do is you have two options. Either create a removal order or apply and see if you get automatically ungated. In this case, this is actually a book, so there's no reason I should be gated in it. So this is, again, another one I'll have to call Amazon on. So most of the time you can fix these errors yourself, but sometimes you will also have to call Amazon in case your solutions don't work. And if you guys have any stranded reasons, leave them in the comments and I will help you the best I can to resolve them. Because I only have three errors here, but there are multiple reasons that inventory might get stranded. So I'll be glad to help you guys. And also keep in mind that Amazon implemented a new program, I think early this year and the last year, where if your inventory is stranded for a certain amount of time, they will actually create an automatic removal order for you and send the product back to you, or they might dispose of it. I'm not sure which one they do. So you just want to prevent your products from being stranded because there's no sense having money invested in these products and having them sitting there and not be able to sell. So let's go back to performance, check out another metric.
All right, before we go into the next metric, do me a favor and make a sacrifice to the YouTube algorithm. Either hit that like button, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave my videos playing in the background while you're running your Amazon business, whatever you want to do. It really does help this channel grow. And we'll start talking about FBA in stock rate now. The FBA in stock rate is actually going to be one of the hardest metrics for retail arbitrage sellers to manage a good rating. And I'll explain that as we go through the information. And so you could see, again, show more details. You can see your seller comparison. You can see your historic rate. And again, I've been trying to really improve my IPI over the last couple months. So you can see it's been going up and uh, holding steady for a while. And then you could see estimated FBA loss sales in the last 30 days is $1,214. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. And just like the last ones, we click on restock today. So this is probably one of the most useful pieces of information out of this whole video. And this page has so much useful information. I wish I was told about this early on when I first started Amazon, because this would have helped so much. So let's just go over some of the information they give you, and then we'll start diving into each piece. So you can see your sales for the last 30 days, breaks it down by total sales volume at $851.89, total of 74 units sold, my current price of $1157, you can see days of supply at 36, and units including inbound at 41, you have re recommended replenished quantity which is 114 units, you have your recommended ship date, so they're saying today they only ship 114 units of this item today. So you can see right here, just on this column, this is the number one reason you're going to have trouble keeping this metric high when you're retail arbitrage seller. And that's because trying to send in 114 of a product you're buying from a store, unless it's a product that's constantly in stock at like Walmart or Target, you're going to have trouble finding enough units to send in. And that's why the loss, what the lost sales is on the last page is because I can't find enough of these products in store to send in and sell. So you can actually dive in here and click on this and it shows your days of supply, similar information to what you had here. And you can see where they are. So I have one available, 40 of them are FC transfer, total 41 units. And again, gives you some more information. There's a lot of things you click within this whole IPI's pages that give you a ton of useful information. Exit out of this. And so you could see how many, you can see this information for all these. And notice for this one here, it has that a similar bar to the different metrics. And we'll click on that and I'll show you why. So I'm not sure if this is available to new sellers, but for me, for certain products, you actually have the option of getting a monthly storage fee discount. And essentially what that is, is Amazon is incentivizing you to keep a certain amount of supply in stock so that way you always have product you sell. So you can see as long as I have this target inventory of 30 to 60 units, I will actually get a discount on the storage fees applied to this item. You can see I have two days of supply. I currently have three units and that is in the red. Over here you can see they want me to have 30 to 60 units. If I have 90 plus units, that's bad. You can see I have very low inventory level, but again, this is an item I'm buying from a retail store where it's not always in stock. So unfortunately, I can't keep enough in stock for that. And this is just the beginning of what's available on this page, believe it or not. You can actually come over here and click on the replenish quantity and you'll get even more information. So it opens up a new page. You can see a giant blank here, which is all the product information. You have your recommended replenishment quantity at 114, estimated inventory amount $461.64 in sales. You can see when it's recommended, your gross margin. And it's kind of funny, but the gross margin is only based on your price minus the fees. For some reason though, even though I have the cost of purchase in there, they don't take that out and consider it. So your, your gross margin is $5.88 on this product. You also have notifications, so for this one I don't have the lowest price offer. 
And the reason I don't have the lowest price offer on this item is because this is a product that is constantly replenishable, hence the amount of sales I've had. And so I keep my minimum price pretty high. So I let the people that are willing to take really low amounts of profit sell out first and then eventually mine will sell. You scroll down and you have even more information. So you can see here, you could put information about your supply chain, whether they ship directly to Amazon, whether they ship to your own facility, or whether they ship in bulk and then you replenish the inventory. You can put supplier lead time, case pack quantity, supplier part number, your lead time. And he actually hover over all this and tells you more information on what each one means. And you could fill this all in and depending on how you fill this in, it'll calculate your recommended replenishment quantity. So if you have a supplier that has a really good lead time and you can buy a, a large amount of units at one time and quickly replenish them, it'll tell you to send in less units because it doesn't have to consider the fact that it's gonna take you four weeks to get the product. So by filling all this information, in, it's gonna make this information, these recommendations more accurate for you. So this is super useful if you can actually find consistent replenishment quantities. You can put all this information in, and then when you're out at the store, before you go, you can actually look at this and say, hey, I need to buy X amount of this product if I can find that amount. Again, scroll down some more and there's even more information. You have your sales and price. You have your fee preview. You can see the different offers. You can see how many sales you've had. You can see how many units, how many other inventory. And if you scroll down, if you actually have your supplier, you can actually see other products available from the supplier, which is pretty cool. Some people get a little worried about putting too much information in this, like their actual su supplier name in there. And the reason is, is that Amazon can also become your competitor. So by telling them who you're buying your products from, they could in theory go to that directly to that supplier and buy the products themselves. I don't know if Amazon will do this, but that's just something to keep in mind. If you're buying it from like TJ Maxx or Target or something, putting your supplier in there is not gonna make any difference because Amazon's not gonna go buy stuff from Target. So let's jump back to the restock inventory page. And you could just dive into this information and get a lot of useful information on what to buy, what products to focus on. And you could scroll down and see like this unit here has 365 days of supply with 26 units currently in stock. So I know if I go out to the store and I see this, there's no reason for me to buy more. I have enough in stock. But it's kind of funny because I have a year's supply and yet Amazon's telling me to send in 185 units. Take this number here with a grain of salt and do your own calculations on how much. Look at your orders for that product. If it's a product you're replenishing, see how many you've sold over the last 30, 60, 90 days. And then consider how many to buy, how often you can find it. Again, a lot of this is just diving into all this information and kind of figuring out what the best plan of action is for you and your business. So, as I mentioned, this is one of the hardest metrics to keep positive if you're a retail arbitrage seller because you don't have the consistency of supply. But there is one very simple solution to make this number go up that I just recently found out about and started implementing. And if we scroll down, I'll find a product I'm not gonna be supplying anymore. So this one here, the price has dropped so it no longer makes sense for me to buy this product and resupply it. So what you can actually do is go to this dropdown and hit hide recommendation. Restock recommendations for the selected product have been set to hidden and you hit okay. And then that item disappears. So essentially what that does, if you scroll up here, you can see I have 74 items. And what that should do is drop that down by one item. So now I only have 73 items that they're giving me recommendation on. So essentially that brings up your percentage because the only items that should technically be on this page are ones that you can easily replenish. So that's how you increase your rate. All the hide recommendations do is take it off of that calculation. So in theory, you could just hide recommendations for all these products, but there's so much useful information on this page that doesn't make sense for you to do that. Now we'll go back to performance. And there's actually three big tips I can give you for improving all of these metrics. So one is 
check this page, the Inventory Performance Dashboard, on an almost daily basis and keep up with all these. Keep track of your excess inventory, your sell through rate, your stranded listings, and what needs to be restocked and items that you're not going to replenish, make sure you hide the recommendations on the restock page. And what that does is by keeping up with this, you're going to help your score improve over time because you're going to keep those metrics good, taking all the actions I have mentioned in this video. Number two is you actually want to go over to manage FBA inventory. Scroll down, you want to click this inactive button. This will bring up any items that are currently inactive. And you want to find items that have no products inbound, no, none available, zero unfillable, and zero reserved. And you just go over here to drop down, click delete product listing, and you hit OK. Also make sure that you're not going to be sending these in within 24 hours. So if you're planning on sending this product in like tomorrow, don't do this, but you just hit OK. And it will delete this product off this page. And that will also help your metrics so you don't have a bunch of empty listings. You don't want a bunch of listings in here that have no products available. It brings down your score. So that's number two. The number one biggest tip I can give you to improve this, this score is to actually get a repricer. All a repricer does is take what price you send it in as and based on how you set the rules, will reprice your item to compete for the buy box and get you more sales. So how does a repricer help you manage your IPI? Well, it mostly helps two metrics, your excess inventory and your FBA sell-through. So for excess inventory, say you buy a product, send it in at $20 sale price, and then a couple other people send it in, price drops down to 19. If you are not going in there manually repricing your items, it's not gonna sell, and it's gonna be sitting there, and it's gonna become excess inventory. A repricer will reprice it automatically, preventing you from having as much excess inventory as you normally would. Repricer obviously also helps with sell-through rate because more products are selling. It doesn't help with sharing inventory because that's something you have to go and manually fix. In stock rate, as I said, is mostly about hiding recommendations for products that cannot be replenished. One bonus tip for the in stock rate to improve that metric also, and one that will help you grow your business faster, is focus on replenishable items. If you are only buying items to sell on Amazon from clearances or sales, you're not going to be sending in that many replenishable items because you buy them on clearance once and then you're not gonna be able to find them again. If you could find replenishable items, you could constantly replenish them, send them in, and that will help you in stock rate a lot. So that's how you improve your IPI. If you found this video helpful, drop a like down below, leave a comment if you have any questions, or if you have any video ideas for the future, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.